uh, 14 kids now, and they are all living in a three-bedroom house, or will. No job, tens of thousands of dollars in debt, and we're learning that three of her older kids are disabled. I'm no expert, but this isn't exactly the best situation for eight new babies. Some people actually think she should lose custody of her kids because she can't handle all that. Oh, don't tell that to the mom. She told NBC's Today Show she can handle it. Any kind of child protective service could come and visit anytime they want if they see the interaction I have with my children and the love that's there. Because no, I am free, I am definitely getting. I'm having help. I'm having. I'm getting. I'm receiving help already. So yes, there's. This takes. What is it? It takes a village to raise a child. Well, this will take a lot of villages. Basically, there she's challenging Child Protective Services. Come and take a look. Uh, she does sound confident, but let's not forget we're talking about 14 kids and a single mom here. Maybe she's getting some help from her mom, who we know is pretty much fed up with, with, with this situation. Uh, joining me now to talk about this, defense attorney Anita Kay. Uh, Anita's had uh, experience work with children and families as a prosecutor as well. Also with us, family law attorney Sharon Lyko. And joining us once again, we welcome back psychology researcher Cooper Lawrence, and we'll take your calls at one eight seven seven tell hln All right, uh, Anita, she welcomes Child Protective Services here. At least that's what she just said in that soundbite. Uh, what are they looking for to make sure these kids are okay and they're going to be properly cared for? Well, Mike, here in California, where this mom is, CPS needs to look at a substantial risk of harm to the children. And that's either from an act she does do or an omission. So if the children are in substantial danger of malnourishment, not being taken care of, that's when CPS could step in. The problem is, if CPS steps in, where do they put these eight newborns? Do you put them in foster care? Do you find a foster family who's going to take care of eight newborns? Do you split up those eight? I mean, that's the problem, is even if CPS steps in, what happens to those children? That's what our main concern should be, is the children and what's going to happen yeah, to them. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, you want to make, make sure, I mean, these kids are here. These 14 children right. here, you want to make sure they get the, the best care possible. Sharon, how do we make sure of that? I mean, um, it's one mom and 14 kids, and I wish her and the kids the best. But how is she going to handle <clears> it, especially when you consider you have three children that are, uh, three of her children already, or older children, developmentally disabled. How do we make sure the kids are going to be okay? You know, it's her obligation to take care of her kids. It is not the country's to rise up and shout foul. Um, the social services, child protective services, doesn't get involved unless there's been a complaint, negligence, right. abuse. So just because she has 14 kids doesn't mean they're going to be camped out in her front yard waiting for something to happen. Uh, it's nobody's business. It is only her business. It's not a crime to have 14 kids. There's no constitutional amendment prohibiting the number of kids that you have. People just need to leave her alone and let her be. But she has thrust the story into the national spotlight. She has her own website where she's taking donations, uh, she's doing all the interviews, she's fielding uh, book or entertainment deals of some sort. She is thrusted out there. And I, I, let, let me ask you this, Sharon, with that said, um, don't you think Child Protective Services, that might change the game a little bit because this is so out there? And no. people You don't think so? No, I mean, yeah. so, she, so she's marketing herself. Capitalism is alive and well in this country. It certainly is. So let her do what she okay. needs you to do. Okay, Anita, what do you say? You think this changes the game for CPS? Absolutely, because she's already getting aid. She's getting food stamps, and three of her children are getting aid. So social services is already involved. She probably has a caseworker, so she's already under the microscope. Then with the intense media attention, you know what? Social services wants to do right by these kids yeah. as well. As far as her marketing herself, you know, I've always said when we talked about the story from the get-go, I don't have a problem with her marketing herself because I hope that she gets money to pay for those yeah. 14 kids. No, I, because yeah. I live in California, so it is more than just a legal issue. It's a societal problem because, you know what? We in California here are all paying for those 14 children. Yeah, exactly. If, if people out of the good of their heart want to, want to give money, so be it. And, and, and I think right. that's a good thing because, again, we're talking about the welfare of 14 uh, children here. Let's get a couple calls in real quick. Uh, Susan in Connecticut. Susan, go ahead. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good, Susan. First of all, let me tell you, um, I'm a, um, I went through infertility for six years, and I'm a volunteer child advocate here in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. I have two children, and my youngest is severely autistic. And being a parent, I, I'm married, and uh, with uh, having a child uh, of autism, 
you have children that have sensory issues, language communication disorders, they have sleep disorders, diet, behavior uh, orders, social issues, and everything. She talks about being um, present with her children. When you have one child with um, issues mm -hmm. with autism, you can't hardly be present with just the one child. Right. I'm fortunate that my oldest child, honor student, he's musically talented right. and everything. How in God's green earth yeah. is this woman ever going to be present for all of these children? And that, Susan, thanks for the call, that's the terminology she, she uses. And I like that terminology, that we should be all there and all present for our children. But Cooper Lawrence, uh, I don't see how you, I mean, the numbers just don't add up, I'm sorry. One mom, 14 kids, let's, uh, and I've talked about this before, to be present for each of those 14, even the eight. If you're present for Adam for a half hour each, that's four hours out of your day right there. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, Susan's right. I mean, one developmentally disabled child in the house is gonna, needs the attention yeah. of, of, the, of the parents. This is one mom. My concern is that uh, for all these children's development, they don't get an opportunity to develop like the rest of us. The older kids are going to be saddled with the idea of taking care of the younger kids. So now the seven-year-old, who's the oldest, seven, eight years old, is going to have to raise their siblings. So they shouldn't have to do that. A seven-year-old should be out playing and with a stick and picking their nose and having a great time, not raising eight children. It is not up to children to raise other children. Well, That's what she's not thinking of, and nobody's talking about the development of these children. Yeah. They're all concerned with the mom, and is she going to be a good mom? No one's saying she's abusive. Nobody's saying that. They're saying that she, it, is, it is physically impossible for one person to be there for 14 tiny children. Yeah, we're, we're looking at video. That was uh, you know, just a moment ago from the Today Show. Guys, I know everyone wants to chime in. We've got a ton of calls waiting. Let's take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, much more on this topic. I want to hear from you. You're feelings where I'm coming from I just want the best for these uh, 14 kids let's hear from you 1877 tell HLN prime news on HLN we're all about news and views imagine As many of you have been emailing, and keep them coming, cnn.com slash prime news. One email there saying, leave this woman alone. Another saying, what's she doing to her parents? I want to backtrack a little bit. And her own mother, uh, Angela Suleiman, had said that her daughter is not capable of raising these 14 kids, even called it unconscionable that she would have eight babies. And then Nadia Suleiman uh, responded to that, saying basically she's not superhuman. Let's give it a listen. She said... Nadia is not capable of taking care of. What human in this planet is capable to take care of 14 independently without support from, from family, from friends, from church? No human is. I'm not superhuman, nor do I claim to be. Okay, and she, so basically she's, she's going to need a lot of help. Uh, we, we all know that. Uh, let's get to the calls. We also have our experts uh, standing by. Uh, let's go to Edward in Virginia. Edward, weigh in on this one. Edward, you there? Yes, uh, sorry. Um, I love your show. Just wanted to put that in. But also, Thanks. This young lady, we're looking at this young lady. Let's look at the facility that did this. These, this lady should have been looked at from all the way from psychiatry all the way down to somebody going in the house, and they should have listened to the parents. The parents said she did. Yeah. The mother, grandmother said she did go and say something. Yeah. So, but this is... This is just out there. This is ridiculous. Yeah, um, Edward, uh, yeah, I read that as well, that the mom and the dad, Angela and her husband, went to the doctor and begged, don't, don't do this. Anita, what's the latest on, the, on that fertility clinic? Is the medical board looking into that? What's going on with that? And should they? And how well, do they do that? I think they're starting to. And once again, I think the media pressure for so long, we didn't know who the doctor was. Now we know. The problem is there's not hard and fast regulations. There's what's considered a standard of care. And we've discussed this before about how many embryos should be implanted or mm -hmm. what is the proper protocol. But this doctor, it seems, had failure after failure. He's been involved in lawsuits. So hopefully the medical board will step in because that's where it comes into play. You've got Suleiman, you've got the doctor. It's kind of they come together and now we have eight in octuplets. Right. Maybe if the doctor had said to her, hey, you know what, I'm not going with more than two embryos, we'd have a different situation. Okay. I want to get Sharon Lyko back again, family law attorney. And I know, Sharon, you're, you're of the mindset, leave this woman alone. And, and I hear you on that, but it's like we now know the story. And we now know the numbers, and they don't, they don't look good for the kids with one mom and quite a challenge with 14 kids. Let me, what would you like to see happen? Because we're know, not going to turn our back on this story, right. for right or for wrong. 
You know, I have a question I'd like to pose to the other guests. Why is it that 30 years ago, people had 10, 12, 14 kids, and nobody was concerned that they were being developmentally deprived? They weren't calling in the authorities, social services, the psychologists. What's changed? So what that the younger kids raise, are raised by the older kids? That happened all the time. You know, people came from these families. Gotcha. I have friends that are lawyers that came from these families. They're not thugs. Okay. They're not sitting behind bars. You make a good point, Sharon. I think one thing I'll say, and then I'll turn it over to Cooper, it's, it's not eight at a time. I think that's one thing. But go ahead, Cooper. I'll let you handle that. No, I mean, if we were an agricultural society, I think it'd be great. The kids could work. They can work on the farm and do what they did back then, which is why people had 15, 20 kids. I mean, and, and also, we had a mom and a dad, usually. We didn't have uh, one mom alone with absolutely no income and no way to support these children. All 14 children are going to be looking to her to care for them. Yeah. And, and care for them doesn't just mean love them. I, I think that she loves them. It seems like she's crazy mm -hmm. about them. No one's questioning that. We're questioning how these children are going to live in this society now now. You can't go back to 30 years ago. This is a very different society yeah. now. Yeah, Cooper, you make a good point, I, I think, back then. And you had, we were a closer-knit family back then. You had extended family close by that could help out. Uh, grandparents, we aunts, uncles. And they were, exactly. yeah, and they were, they were bigger families in general. Anita, I'll let you respond, and then we got to go. Right. I agree with Cooper. It's absolutely a different time now, and we need to respond to what the time is now. And we're going to keep looking at the story because it is in the media. Yeah. So while I agree with Sharon on one hand, sure, we should leave her alone. We can't. It's out there. And as a resident of California, I'm concerned because my tax dollars are going to pay for these kids. And what started it? It's a vicious circle, and we need to figure out what's going to happen to these children. Because yeah. I think everybody's concern is for the 14 children. Yeah, end of the day, I think we can all agree what's best for the, the, for the 14. Uh, ladies, we're going to have to leave it there. Anita Kay, Sharon Lyko, Cooper Lawrence, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, all right, uh, I, I want to hear from you on this one. I want your calls about Merrill Lynch. This company was going down the drain. And while that's going on, New York Attorney General Andrew Cuomo says the company doled.